Can Ethereum hold on until Ethereum 2.0 or will it be crushed by the competition? After the recent core developer meetup, it looks like the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade has been delayed until the middle of next year. And this now creates a problem. I'm sure everyone's aware that Ethereum has very high gas fees, especially in comparison to the new competitors like Solana, Algorand and Avalanche. So the big question is, can Ethereum hold on until Ethereum 2.0 can launch or will it get crushed by the competition? Well, that is the topic of this video. Now, if slow transaction times and high gas fees are a major issue, then people would stop using Ethereum and we would see this in the data. So that's what we'll be looking at. And I've got some very important data that anyone invested in Ethereum needs to see. So we'll be covering Ethereum's gas fee issue, no more ignoring it, time to face it head on. The supply and demand for Ethereum right now, are there any signs of Ethereum's demise? And then we'll finish up with one very important chart, which is why I think Ethereum will survive and thrive over the coming months. And it comes down to just one thing. As always, if you do enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like, always appreciated. Okay, so let's jump straight in with the elephant in the room, Ethereum's high gas fees. Is this gonna bring an end to Ethereum before 2.0 can launch, as six months in crypto is a long time, right? Well, ready? Let's do this. So here are the average transaction fees for Ethereum, going back from May 2017 all the way to today. And you can see for the vast majority of time, Ethereum was quite cheap, only a dollar, a couple of dollars per transaction. Uh, it spiked up September 2020, up to about $10, came back down. Then we spiked up past $20, coming down shortly, spiked right up to over $45 before peaking up this year, about $46. And today it's around the $30 mark. Now, just note, this is the average. So some transactions will be $50, $100. Some transactions might be $10. But on average, each transaction is about $30. Looking at some other chains, and again, this is by Coinmetrics. This time it's a log chart. So this is going up in 10 times increments. So I know there's a lot of zeros, but this is actually only $10. So from here, $10, this would be like $30. So each of these little spikes and drops is a very, very big range. And we've got Ethereum being on top here. Then looking at some of the new up and coming competitors, around the $1 mark, we have Cosmos and also Avalanche. And a bit lower, we have Polkadot and the Binance Smart Chain. Then looking really good down here, at a fraction of a penny, we have Algorand. And then the best one on this chart is Solana, which is pretty much dirt cheap, fractions of a penny. So this basically says there are several competitors that are a lot cheaper than Ethereum. So the problem is pretty obvious. Ethereum is very expensive. With an average transaction fee of around $30, there are now more and more competitors at a fraction of a penny. Now, if you're buying something for $50 and you're paying a $30 fee, then I get it, this makes no sense and I can totally see why people are getting pissed off with Ethereum. So the big question is, how much of an issue is this? If this is a major issue, then people will begin switching. So what is going on? Well, luckily for us, this can be found in the data. And as two things mainly affect the price, supply and demand, let's start there. So if gas fees were really a big issue, then people would be leaving Ethereum. So what exactly is happening? Let's take a look. And this is Ethereum's unique addresses. And as you can see, the chart is still going exponential. In fact, so far in 2021, Ethereum has still grown by tens of millions of users. So people are clearly not leaving Ethereum. 
And if the gas fees were such a big issue, then people would stop using Ethereum, right? So are fewer people using Ethereum? Let's take a look. And as you can see, Ethereum settles over $6 trillion in transactions over the past 12 months. And just look at the growth from 2020. And as you can see, the growth of 2021 has been epic. So very clearly, people are not stopping using Ethereum. In fact, transactions on the network are exploding. So that was the demand. Let's now take a look at what's going on with supply, as there is a lot of Ethereum being staked away for 2.0. And as you can see, the trend from December 20, there is more and more Ethereum being locked away for Ethereum 2.0. In fact, it's almost $25 billion of the Ethereum has been locked away. And this is the balance on exchanges. So how much of the Ethereum is actually on exchanges? And basically, if there's lots of Ethereum on exchanges, this is where you go to sell your Ethereum. And if you take your Ethereum off the exchanges, then this is what people do when they either hodl or they use it. And what's this saying? Well, this goes back to March last year. And as you can see, about 20% of the Ethereum supply last year was held on exchanges. But over the last couple of years, this has been falling and falling. And now it's at multi-year lows. And now it's just over 12% of Ethereum is actually on the exchanges. So if high gas fees were really a major issue, then people would be migrating away from Ethereum. But as you saw, the user base is growing by tens of millions. And if high gas fees were really a major issue, then people would stop using Ethereum, right? But as you saw, Ethereum's on track for a record year of transactions, over $6 trillion. So I ask you again, what is going on? Well, in the making of this video, I think I found the answer. And it also tells me why I don't think Ethereum's got any problems over the next six months until 2.0 gets launched. So, ready to find out what's going on? So let's take a look at Ethereum's biggest use case, and this is decentralized finance. And now there's almost $250 billion locked away in DeFi protocols, and Ethereum has the lion's share. So of total value locked, you can see it's winning by a country mile, $160 billion. Second place is Binance, 20 billion. Then we have Solana, Terra, and Avalanche. And this is a visual, so of all the money locked away in DeFi, Ethereum is clearly taking the lion's share. So what is going on? Well, remember this huge figure here, as this has to do with liquidity, and we'll come to this in a second. So ready for your big aha moment and find out what is going on with Ethereum? Well, here it is in one chart. This is the transaction volume for DeFi. Now we have four quarters here, but let's just pay attention to the latest quarter on the chart. And what it clearly shows is that the vast majority of money and volume is coming from large institutions, followed by professional investors, followed by institutional money, followed by large retail investors. And then just look how much money the small retail investor has in DeFi. And this is what is going on. So the lesson here is always follow the money. And when you see the YouTube videos and people complaining in the comments section about Ethereum's going to get crushed by the ETH killers, it's coming from this group here you're never going to see the large institutional investors in the comment section complaining about Ethereum. And so will Ethereum last out another six months until 2.0? Well, look at the growth rate of the large institutions. This was three quarters ago, then it got to 40%, 60%, 70%. So it looks to me Ethereum is serving the big fish and the whales. With the news that Ethereum 2.0 has been delayed until the middle of next year, many Ethereum investors have been panicking that Ethereum may not be able to hold out until the upgrade. 
especially with all the new and upcoming layer ones on the market, like Solana, Luna, Cardano, Avalanche, all very cheap and gaining ground. If there was a major issue with gas fees, then we would see it in the data. People would stop using Ethereum and be migrating over to different platforms. However, Ethereum's unique addresses are continuing to explode by tens of millions of users, and with a record year of transactions of over $6 trillion, things have never looked better for Ethereum. So what is going on? We discovered that the vast majority of money in crypto is not coming from your smaller retail investor, but the big professional and institutional investor. And they need one thing, liquidity. And this is why Ethereum continues to be their platform of choice. People investing millions of dollars really do not care about a $50 transaction fee. And someone who's just sold a $100,000 NFT really don't care about a $30 gas fee. And this is why I think Ethereum won't be going anywhere anytime soon. So as of right now, it looks to me like Ethereum is serving the big fish and the whales, and the other layer ones are taking care of the smaller fish, the retail investor. But it is important to point out this is not what Ethereum wanted to do. So they are working on fixing this. So there you are guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this clears up what is going on with Ethereum right now and why the gas fees are not a major threat just yet. For now, just to say, if you did enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, then click below and join us. Got some great videos coming up that you don't want to miss. Okay, cheers guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.